The Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Bernard Tobin here today on the Corn School. I'm down at Ridgetown campus catching up with college professor and combine mechanic TJ Pullman. TJ, how's it going? It's great. We got a beautiful day here to talk about some combine settings. We're going to talk about some settings and before long we'll be harvesting corn. Um, TJ, when you talk about settings, uh, you know, why are they so important? Why is it so important to get them right before you head into the field? Well, with corn being around 450 today, every bushel counts. Mm -hmm. Uh, when you spend $800,000 on a combine, you want to cover the most, get the most out of the investment and cover the most acres per hour that you can. Hmm. Hey, let's talk about, uh, before we get into it, you know, what are the specific settings on this machine that you really need to focus on? It starts at the head. We, it's our first chance to get it in the combine. Once it's in the combine, we got to use the rotor and the concave to get it threshed off the cob. Once we've got it off the cob, we got to get the sample clean with the sieve and chaffer yeah. and get it in the bin. So if we're going to tackle the settings, where do we start? We're going to start at the head. Okay, so the first thing we want to do when we walk up to the head is pop our snouts. And the first thing we're going to see are our gathering chains. So chain tension is important. There's a spacer on the bolt. We want an eighth of an inch gap between the spacer and the washer on the bolt. That makes sure our chains are nice and snug and they're not going to pop off in the field. After we've looked at that, our chain tension's good, we're gonna look at the deck plates. When it comes to the deck plates, with modern technology today, we can hydraulically open them and close them from in the cab. In an ideal world, we want this opening here to be an eighth of an inch larger than our corn stalks. Uh, with variability and everything in the field that can change hour by hour, section by section. However, one main important feature is at the back, we actually want that gap bigger than the front. And that's also by about an eighth of an inch. By having a wider open gap at the back, it's going to allow the trash from the stock to come through and hopefully not go into the combine. In a perfect world, I want the ears snapping off my stock at about three quarters of the way back. If they're snapping off too soon or the whole stock is snapping off, I need to make a ground speed adjustment. So I got to slow down or speed up or I've got to speed up or slow down my header. Can also be done from in the cab. Next, we're gonna move up to the auger, the cross auger at the back. Auger height is important, uh, especially as the auger wears, the outer diameter shrinks. You can adjust it up and down to some extent. If my auger is too high, it's going to scrape along the top of the cob instead of carry the cob to the feeder house, and that causes grain damage, as you can see here. Okay, quick thing before we move on to the rotor here. If you have a John Deere, you have a feed accelerator. You have to switch it to low speed for corn. If you are finding you're having a lot of fines uh, in your sample of corn, or you just seem to be grinding a lot of corn, you may want to consult your dealer to see if you have a slowdown kit on your feed accelerator. If you have a red combine, you don't have to worry about this. Okay, here at the rotor, first thing I want to talk about is concave selection. For corn, we want to use round bar, whether it's a case or a deer. Case does offer a large wire as an alternative. One thing to note when using large wire, if the leaves are green or damp, this can plug. Pulling every other wire here may help. Ultimately though, if you keep plugging these, you're gonna have to get yourself a set of round bars. All right, so now that we know what concaves to put in, we're gonna talk about threshing and separating. On a rotor machine, all threshing happens in this section here. After this, section part here, we are only separating. If I have kernels still on the cob in the back of the rotor, they are lost. They're out the back and on the ground. All the kernels have to come off the cob in the front section of the rotor. So how do we do that? Well, it's very simple. What I like to do is walk out in the field, pick a few cobs and I hand shell them. I want to measure the diameter of the cob. If it's, let's say 20 millimeters, I want to set my concave opening at a roughly 20 millimeters. If my concave is too tight, we will start splitting the cobs lengthways and crushing them. If I am too far open, the cobs will actually get in there sideways and start breaking apart this way. And we'll be getting cob out the back with kernel still on it. If I've got my concave set, that's good. 
I've still got cobs with kernels on them. The only thing that's going to get the kernels off the cob is rotor speed. So speed the rotor up, get the kernels off the cob. If I am too fast on my rotor, I will be grinding the kernels, slow the rotor down. There's a fine line between getting the kernels off the cob and grinding. So you kind of got to find it varies between variety, year, moisture, find what works best for you. When we're back, so we threshed, we got the kernels off the cob. We're moving back to the road or the back of the rotor here on a John Deere. We have these little spacers on top of our separator grates. They should be put in in between the grates here. That essentially allows our crop mat to expand, the tines comb through, and should hopefully get the few remaining kernels out of the husks and in the machine and up to the bin. If you have a red combine in corn, they don't run tines. Reds have these um, threshing elements all the way back on the rotor for corn. We take these off and we put straight bars on. When it comes to case, the straight bars will only go on in certain spots. You can't really screw it up. You want about eight of these if you've got an eight row head. And that will give you lots of separation capacity in corn with a case combine. Okay, once the kernels are out of the rotor, they're gonna hit the cleaning shoe. When talking about the cleaning shoe in corn, the chaffer is on top and the sieve is on the bottom. Uh, the bottom sieve, we don't really use in corn. It should be wide open. There is nothing we want in tailings when we're harvesting corn. The chaffer, we either want it open um, just enough that the kernels fall through. If we're too far open, we're gonna get mog in the bin, which is material other than grain. When we're talking about mog in the bin and fan speed, we have to look at what's in the bin. Do we have small light material, pieces of leaf, silks, things like that, or are they bigger, heavier pieces of cob? If you're getting large, heavy pieces in the bin, we have to close the traffer down to keep them getting out. If we've got light pieces of leaves, silk, other things like that, air speed will get that out. So we increase the fan speed and blow the light material out the back and stop it from getting in the bin. Okay, our last stop of the day here is at the chopper. A couple of key points to remember when we're back here at the chopper for corn. One, we want to make sure the chopper is in slow speed. Two, we want to make sure our stationary knives underneath are out. And three, our spreader. Now, depending on your combine and the options, this particular John Deere, we can control the spreader from the cab. Essentially, I only want them spinning fast enough to distribute the crop as wide as I'm cutting and a nice even mat, hopefully. So that's a wrap here. Just remember, a nice efficient combine operation starts at the head. If we go through and we do everything properly, you're gonna have a nice successful harvest season.